Hello and welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath, and in this episode, we are talking about every new release from Kino Lorber and their partner labels for the month of July 2022. This is everything from Kino Lorber. I love making these videos, and they are possible because of Kino Lorber. So huge thanks to Kino Lorber for sending this stuff so I could share it with you. I love making these videos. I love talking about new Kino Lorber titles. As you know, I'm a huge fan of the label. I love the titles that they are releasing. So much admiration, and I know a lot of you guys feel the same way, and you've come to Kino Lorber through my coverage, so it means so much to me. I also want to shout out this shirt. This is the new shirt in the Serial at Midnight shop. Uh, it's called The Night Heath Came Home. Do you see what I did there? Uh, this comes from uh, designer Nate Pancakes. He's done a couple of our shirts. All of our shirts are at serialatmidnight.threadless.com. Go check them out. Uh, just in time for Halloween, right? By the time it ships to you, you'll be getting, gearing up for Halloween season. Let's jump right into it. We got so much ground to cover. Uh, we have two 4K releases. We've already talked about The Killing. I have a, a dedicated video just for The Killing. Stanley Kubrick's film noir masterpiece. Uh, great restoration. It's a 4K restoration from the original camera negative. Movie looks stunning. So much beautiful grain. That, that gorgeous film print. I love film. I love the way film looks when it's clean and properly presented. This is a must have for movie fans. Uh, and, and you'll find out why at my review, which I'll link to, I'll pop it up here and I'll link to it in the description of this episode. We have not talked about Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Uh, beautiful, heartbreaking uh, movie from Michel Gondry from 2004. This is my third edition of this movie, DVD, Blu-ray, and now the 4K. Of course, this handily bests every previous edition. It's a 4K restoration that has been color graded by the cinematographer Ellen Kuras. Uh, it is a gorgeous restoration. That 35 millimeter filmic presentation is just soaring. The colors, everything, it's just beautiful. Now, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind has a look. It has a dreamy, it's hard to describe because it's, you know, some things are just visual. There is no word for a visual representation, um, but it has a very surreal, uh, dreamlike, sometimes it's soft, sometimes it's, this is just the way it looks. It's always looked that way. Now we get to see what it was supposed to look like uh, and maybe what it did look like in theaters as per the cinematographer. Um, I'm going to address something really quick because I'm seeing it. I, it's been uh, it's been around for a while, but it's worse than ever now. The people on Reddit and on uh, the forums, you know, the you know, that are picking apart every single release and they're saying, "Oh, this is in the wrong color space." Uh, I saw with my own two eyes. I saw someone say that the cinematographer is not a judge for what a movie should look like. I saw it crazy stuff. We're living in a world where everyone wants to be the first person to blow the whistle and every single new 4K is pulled apart. They're popping it out. They're looking at gamma levels. They're they're not watching the movie and going like, it looks pretty good. They're, they're looking at numbers and they're saying, hmm, I don't think this is the right color space for this. Let's let the cinematographer decide what the color space for this is. How about that? Now, here's the thing. Uh, we need to remember that 4Ks get new color grading, usually from the people that made the movie. Um, color, the, the Blu-ray color timing and the 4K color timing, they're going to be different because they're two different color timings. 4K color timing really taps into what the HDR spectrum can do, what Dolby Vision can bring to a visual image. If you're comp You can't compare them. They're two different things. And, and 4Ks have been given a, a deeper level of attention that is supposed to be more in line with the original theatrical presentation. Uh, if someone says, I saw this movie in 1976, it didn't look like that. That's, you can't trust that. We don't remember what that movie looked like. We have to go by what the people that made the movie think. And this comes directly from the cinematographer. I think it's gorgeous. I think a lot of this stuff is gorgeous. So many people are complaining about things that to me are as close to perfection as we're going to get. And remember, perfection doesn't exist in a corruptible medium like film. If people are involved, it's never going to be perfect, but it's darn close. This movie looks great. It is a great film. And guess what? Tons of special features here. Everything that was on the Blu-ray, everything that was on the Blu-ray. The commentary, all the making of featurettes, the, the interviews with the cast, it's all been carried over. There are things on this Blu-ray, the, the special features are on the Blu-ray disc. This is a two disc set. We have the movie on 4K and we have the movie on Blu-ray. Uh, special features aren't on the 4K, they're on the Blu-ray so that the 4K movie has maximum room to breathe. Uh, the special feature, there are special features here that are not even listed. The polyphonic spree music video, it's not listed here, but it's on the disc. 
uh, the fake commercial for the company, that's here too. In fact, not only does it have everything from the Blu-ray, it has a new interview with the cinematographer about this movie. Uh, great, it was for like 20 minutes, like a 20 minute interview, substantial stuff. Copyright 2022 by Kino Lover, it's brand new. Uh, great package, fans of this movie, you, you, if you wanna know if it's worth an upgrade, yes, it absolutely is. Uh, if you've never bought this movie, bef movie before, this is what you want because you got the Blu-ray and the 4K. Future-proof your collection. Eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. I'm a big... Can you tell I'm a fan of that movie and it, it bothers me when people like rip things apart, especially unjustly? Um, it, we, I've said too much about it already. Night Gallery Season 2. Uh, we, when Night Gallery Season 1 came out, so many of us were hoping it wasn't going to be too long before Season 2 came out, uh, and it hasn't been. I'm so excited about it. So, uh, what? It, of course, like I can't... Am I going to explain Night Gallery? So it was Rod Serling, Twilight Zone, follows Twilight Zone. Uh, this show is 1970... The season 1971 to 1972. Uh, anthology TV show. So many stars come through here. This is a joy for shows like this for me as the character actors that come through here. Did they list any... Uh, revisiting the gallery, a look back. Featurette with actors Lindsay Wagner, Pat Boone, Joseph Campanella. Manix fans represent season one of Manix. Uh, Lori Prange, uh, James, let's see, who, so many people. Oh, here we go. Edward, Edward G. Robinson, Eddie G. See, yeah, I was in the Night Gallery, see, yeah, I was in the 70s, yeah. Vincent Price, my man Vinny P, is in this series. Uh, let's see, Ray Milan, David McCallum, Patrick McNeese, Sandra Locke, Cloris Leachman, Elsa Lanchester, none other than the Bride of Frankenstein herself in the Night Gallery. Uh, Patty Duke, so many of you guys. Adam West, Orson Welles. This is great stuff. This is the, this is the joy for me is seeing these character actors. Even if the story is not a slam dunk, you get to see people that you like to watch. Thirty-two audio commentaries with a ton of people, including Amanda Reyes, who is uh, uh, the expert on when it comes to TV, uh, TV stuff. Uh, Kim Newman's here. So many people. Tim Lucas uh, revisiting the Night Gallery. Look back. Lost Tales from season two. Um, they have done uh, the, the Syndicated Conundrum Part 2. They started that on the first release, the Syndicated Conundrum Part 1, talking about how this, the Night Gallery got like chopped up and like the, the mess that it went through in, during syndication. Uh, it's a fascinating story. Like shooting new footage, putting like former like public domain footage in these episodes to get them to the syndicated running time. Fascinating stuff. So we got the, the Part 2 of that documentary here. Uh, art gallery, the paintings, and 19 TV spots. It is the best. This is so great. Uh, we've got, uh, this is what we're looking at. No stacks, stack discs, anything like that. And our booklets with the episodes and who's in them. Actually, does it say who's in them? I don't think it does. All right, let's, we're just getting started. We're already eight minutes into this thing. Let's keep going. The Film Noir, uh, Dark Side of Cinema, Volume 8 box set. Hold on. 8, yes. They're already talking about Volume 10, and they've confirmed like through 15 or 16, maybe even more than that. Like this is one of my favorite things. You can't really see because of the glare, but here's 1 through 7 right here. I got the Western collections, all the actor collections. Those are my favorite things that Kino Lorber does. Uh, these come, I think all three of these come from the Universal Vault, which is great. Uh, we got here, I'll, we'll do them in order. We got Streets. Street of Chance with Burgess Meredith and Claire Trevor. We got a new audio commentary on this by Professor and, Professor and Film Scholar Jason A. Nay. I'm talking so fast because we got so much ground to cover and I want to make sure we get it all. Um, and not the, and the video not be two hours long. We have uh, Inter Arsene Lupin, which is... Um, Hold on, I'm trying to see if there's any like director's names I need to tell you guys about. This is Charles Corvin, Ella Raines, and uh, oh, J. Carroll, just just J. Carroll Nash and uh, Gail Sondergaard, who I love, love Gail Sondergaard. Um, another thing, like Universal contract players, we get to see the Universal contract players that include Tony Curtis. You know, like you know, like you never know who's gonna pop up in these movies. And then uh, Temptation, Merle Oberon, uh, George Brent, great stuff. Um, anybody else we need to name check here? Oh, I didn't tell you. Uh, audio commentary by Anthony Slide and audio commentary by Kelly Robinson. So, um, I love this series and I'm super, I'm, I'm super excited, guys, about where it's going to go. Uh, I'll do full reviews for those movies at serialatmidnight.com as all reviews show up at serialatmidnight.com. A re-release of Planet of the Vampires, Mario Bava. Now, a lot of people, here's, this is, 
this is worth mentioning. Um, Kino Lorber is clearing out a lot of their Baba. And people are like, well, it's because they're going to do re-releases, right? They're going to do what they did with Planet of the Vampires and do a better, you know, slipcover. I think this is a new, yeah, new 2K master. we got audio commentary, Kim Newman, Barry Forshaw, audio commentary by Tim Lucas, uh, trailers from hell with Joe Dante, trailers from hell with Josh Olson. That's the two, tra- the two hosts of uh, the movies that made me. Um, they have said that there may be one or two that get re-released, but they're not all going to get the Planet of the Vampires treatment. This is just, uh, this is just for this movie. So, plan accordingly. <laughs> that's the that's the message of the story. Uh, reversible artwork. This artwork is on the interior of this case. Uh, I'm a big fan of Bava. I should do a Bava spotlight. Uh, big fan of my Italian cinema and just the... Bava's one of my favorites. He's one of my favorite Italian directors. So this has been... Uh, I've, first of all, that art is amazing. That's a beautiful slipcover. I love, I love these... Um, I love these slip covers. They're limited. I don't know how long, how many these are uh, in stock for. I don't know how many units they've got for the slip covers. But if you want them, as always, slip covers like this are an incentive for you to buy early, not to wait for a sale. If you want it, you got to support it when it first comes out. And that's why they do it. Um, and I understand why they do it. Uh, this is a re-release as well, Steel Justice. Uh, this is Martin Cove, of course, from The Karate Kid and... Uh, Cobra Kai, I guess, right? But that's, that's where people, most people know him from. But he's also in uh, First Blood Part 2. Rambo First Blood Part 2. Rambo, First Blood, Rambo, whatever. Rambo 2. <laughs> so he's in that. Uh, it's amazing to me that he did not have a bigger action career. Obviously, he was in action, he was in action movies, right? But like, he's the lead here. And he's got the goods. This movie's amazing. This is Again, this is a re-release of a, of a title that had cur- come and gone. Um, and it's back in print now. It's got the sweet slip cover. It's not alternate artwork or anything like that, but I love having these slip covers because they look really good on the shelf. Audio commentary by star Martin Cove. That's great. Uh, and writer director Robert Boris. Moderated by film historian Alex Van Dyne. Uh, and then theatrical trailer. So reason to double dip, especially if you don't already have it. You, you, you got to highly recommended by Serial at Midnight. I think that movie is excellent. It is so much fun. A great. What is the year on this? Uh, 87 classic 87 action Uh, a new toby hooper movie on blu-ray you guys a dangerous i'm dangerous tonight Uh, i've never seen this movie full disclosure like some of this stuff has just come in it's been here like a day so i haven't seen some of what we're talking about here uh including this one so it's a toby hooper movie which of course texas chainsaw massacre um i'm gonna explain toby hooper to you you know toby hooper so brand new 2k master the cast on this one's pretty great we got uh tony perkins Mr. Uh, Mr. Norman Bates himself, who else? We have Arlie Ermy, Daisy Hall, Corey Parker, um, and uh, it's directed by Toby Hooper. So I'm really curious about this. There's a lot of special features here. Hopefully you can see that. And uh, does this have all? I don't think this had. Yeah, no alternate art. Let me double check. Yeah, no alternate artwork here. But I love the slipcover. Who's seen the movie? What do you think about it? Actually, give your comments on all the stuff we're going to talk about here. If you've seen it and you recommend it, I want to know. I'm very excited about this. I've already watched all three of these. Uh, The Maria Montez John Hall Collection. These are three 40s Technicolor movies uh, that are... Now, I'll tell you, they're all on one disc, but they're short. They're 75 minutes each, roughly. Um, Maria Montez and John Hall made six movies together at Universal. And... I think in 2020, they, they started to put these out. We have Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. Or I should do these in order. We started with Arabian Nights. This was a huge hit in Universal. See, it was like, they're like mid-budget adventure movies in the 40s in full color and widescreen too, right? Uh, no, it's not widescreen. Never mind. Well, anyway, <laughs> that's the draw, right? Is they're beautiful color adventure movies in a time when you don't necessarily associate adventure movies with being in color. Uh, and they really knew what they had with the the cheesecake and the beefcake because Maria Montez was extremely gorgeous and very uh, voluptuous, right? John Hall was beefcakey, and they knew it, and they got them in as little clothes as possible as often as they could in each movie. So Arabian Nights was big, and then they commissioned um, Cobra Woman, which has a really... It's, the Cobra scene is very interesting. Um, 
they knew exactly what they were doing. And then another year later, we have Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. So they made the six movies. These came out starting a couple of years ago. They have finished the six with this collection. And interestingly, I also pulled this. This is just like a happy coincidence. This book just came out. The Queen of Technicolor, Maria Montez in Hollywood. And you can see, like, she's she, she's she's a real, uh, what would they say in the 40s? Like, she's a dame. So I guess what they would say. Anyway, it's full of photos. This is a brand new book from, uh, what is the University Press of Kentucky. And I, I pre-ordered this, actually. And it is here. And it is the story of Maria Montez. She died very young. I think she died at 39 before, I think it was the early 50s. Um, and it's just a shame because she was not always it's so interesting. Like so many of her movies, she plays royalty princes and stuff like that. Um, but uh, she was not always happy with what she was getting on screen and she was vocal about it. And so she didn't get as much work as she could have if she just gone with the flow. But uh, I love those movies. Those movies are so much fun. They're great Saturday afternoon matinee kind of movies. Uh, and like, how far do I want to go with this? They know how beautiful she is, and as I said, they get them in uh, sexy situations as often as possible. But if you're a kid watching, right over your head. There's, you know, I won't say anymore. You gotta watch the movies, and I'll review them. The reviews show up at serialatmidnight.com. Uh, Marty has been reissued. I know a lot of people were excited about this coming back in print because a movie like Marty, Ernest Borgnine won an Oscar for this movie, right? Um, this brand new 4K master, so it's back and better than ever. Brand new 4K master. Uh, audio commentary by entertainment journalist author Brian Reisman and Max Every includes both 1.85 aspect ratio and the 137 aspect ratio. So you have your choice of how you want to watch it. I think that's great. Rather than people argue about it, those same people on Reddit and in the forums, I love to tear everything down. They have less to complain about now. Uh, you have your own, cho you get to decide for yourself. So I don't think this has any alternate. Yeah. An absolute classic. Uh, what is this, 1955? I've been watching a lot of McHale's Navy lately. Are there any McHale's Navy fans out there? The original series, Tim Conway, Ernest Borgnine. Um, such a great show. We have a trio of like When Nature Attacks movies. Uh, we have Ants. We have Terror Out of the Sky. And we have Tarantulas, The Deadly Cargo. Now you see all three of these have these cool slipcases. These are 70s TV movies from the golden age of the TV movie. Um, Terror Out of the Sky is a sequel to a movie I've never seen, so I feel like I needed to work. And I don't think it's out from Kino Lorber either, so i got to do some, some digging on that. Uh, Amanda Reyes has a commentary on Tarantulas with um, the podcast host Amanda Reyes, da uh, Dan Budnick, and Nate, uh, Nate Johnson. New art, by Vince Evans did the art for all of these. All three of these come from uh, Vince, artist Vince Evans. I think they're gorgeous. The only one that has an alternate, let me verify myself really quick. Uh, the only one that has alternate cover artwork, a reversible art sleeve, is Ants. But we do get the classic, I believe that Suzanne Summers with ants all over her bosoms. Uh, and uh, these are loaded. I, I think these movies are really fun. I think they look great. Again, I'm seeing criticism of how they look. Um, they look good to me. Especially, I mean, even on my 4K TV, they look good. They, are they perfect? No, they're not perfect. But they look really good. Um, this has, uh, I'm just going to hold them up. And you can read. I, I feel like I'm harping a lot on this issue, but I think this issue needs to be addressed because it's happening more and more. Is like the fan entitlement, and it is literally every release. I guess it's not just every 4K release because these are Blu-rays, and it's happening with the Blu-rays too. People are just like, everything is nothing is good enough. There's no gratitude. There's no sense of like it's like. Well, that's not how I would have done it. And of course, there's thousands and thousands of buyers who are perfectly happy, but the loudest ones get the attention and they think they know better than everybody else. And they think if you disagree with them, that you're an idiot and you have no idea what you're talking about. That's the, that's the counter argument. I'm right and you're an idiot. Well, okay. Well, that's the end of that conversation. Um, I hate seeing this in fandom and I know that it's such a small part of fandom, which is why I want to call it out because if you see it, we don't have to accept this as the fact. It's not the fact. It's one person's opinion. And louder opinions do not make opinions right. They're opinions. Uh, the organization, Sydney Poitier double feature. This is They Call Me Mr. Tibbs and The Organization. Now, if you have, this is the, the last two movies in the Heat of the Night trilogy. If you have the Heat of the Night on 4K, 
you have these two movies on Blu-ray already. But if you don't have that movie, if you're one of those people that uh, already have an edition or you just want these last two, here's the last two movies in the trilogy. Um, on I think, I think they're on one, yeah, they're on one disc, two movies on one disc. Uh, and the only special features are theatrical trailers. Really, I think if you're 4K capable, pick up the In the Heat of the Night 4K because you're getting these movies and you're getting In the Heat of the Night in the best possible format. And there's even some special features on that package that's not in this package. I'm excited about this one a lot because I love Sammy Davis Jr. and we don't get a lot of his movies. This is a double feature. We got Salt and Pepper, which is uh, Sammy Davis Jr. and Peter Lawford. And uh, that is directed by uh, some guy named Richard Donner. I, I think he's a Superman. I want to say he did something with Superman. Uh, also, Goonies. I love early Donner. I love the Donner. Then this is the like the, the unsung Donner, right? The Donner that directed Gilligan's Island and all these episodes of TV shows. I think he did some Mikhail's Navy, too, if I remember correctly. This is a 1968 movie, uh, Salt and Pepper. Uh, and... Uh, I, I'm happy we're getting this stuff. And then one more time is uh, is uh, Sammy Davis Jr. and Peter Lawford directed by some guy named Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis, we just talked about, um, I was talking about Jerry Lewis is the, in the, uh, the Ladies' Man. Just came out on Blu-ray from another company. And I was talking about Jerry Lewis, the artist, right? Like he's controversial in his comedy. Like I feel like in comedy, well, he's big in France, right? Jerry Lewis is big in France. But he had this real artistic sensibility. He was influenced by Chaplin. And he really, like, The Ladies' Man is an art movie. And I, I'm fascinated by that Jerry Lewis. And that's the Jerry Lewis for this 1970 movie is, like, Jerry Lewis, the director, you know? Um, so, anyway, there's no, there's the trailers, but there's no commentaries or anything like that. But you do get both movies. I don't think there's anything inside. Yeah, there's nothing in there. I'm just happy to see... Uh, more Sammy Davis Jr. on Blu-ray. Keanu Lorber has been great about getting these Sammy movies out. And uh, a Sammy Davis Jr. reissue, there's a company that just put out, and I'll be talking about this in a Music Palooza coming out soon too, but there's a new three-disc set, and it's everything Sammy Davis Jr. did from like 1949 to 1962 music-wise. It's like every single and the B-side, Sinatra. It's, it's great. We'll talk about it. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. Um, Time Out of Mind. Some of these are still sealed because they've, because I just haven't had time to get to him yet. Uh, this is a 1947 movie from Universal. It's directed by Robert Siodmak. Great director. Yeah, brother of Kurt, right? Kurt Siodmak. Uh, brand new 2K master. Yeah, they, they just shout him out here. The, Robert Siodmak, the brilliant director of The Suspect, The Spiral Staircase, The Killers, Cry of the City, Criss Cross, and Deported. Um, it's a 19th century melodrama with noir tinges. Audio commentary by film historian Lee Gambin and costume historian Alyssa Rose. Uh, who's seen this? What do you think about it? I'm loving... See, this is these are the kinds of movies that can easily be overlooked because they're... I, the 30s movies that aren't horror get overlooked. I don't know if they get overlooked, but they don't get talked about as much because they're not... I guess maybe they're not sexy to talk about. But the 30s, uh, the 30s non-horror... Uh, like the mysteries. I'm thinking specifically of like Double Door, which I loved. The more I think about Double Door, the more I enjoy it. I'm like, that was a really special movie. Um, but they don't, They I feel like they're not being talked about much. And so this is another one, like a, a Universal Studio movie from the 40s. Great director, great cast, but it's is it sexy enough? Is it getting the attention it deserves? I don't know. Um, all right, we're branching out a little bit. This is from Kino Lorber, but not part of the studio classics. Mondo Kane. This is, I, I haven't watched this yet, but I really am excited about it. It's a Italian post-apocalyptic movie about gangs. These two kids get uh, mixed up in these gangs, these two boys, and it's that story. And I'm hearing nothing but raves about this movie. Someone said it's the best post-apocalyptic apocalyptic Italian movie ever, which is high praise because they've done some great ones. Um and uh, I, I really am excited about getting to this. We've got uh, the making of Mondo Kane and the trailer here. Who's watched Mondo Kane? Mondo Kane. <laughs> Shout it out. Review coming soon. Uh, we got the new volume of Rock. Let me. I'm watching. It's Rocco Schivone. Um, is uh, it's this Italian? He's an Italian cop. He's been sent from Rome to basically the border of um, of, of like the. Um, like is it Sweden and uh, France? I think is where he like up 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 at the top of the boot, 
and um, it's really, 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 really cold, and he's miserable, and he's unhappy, and they're very, I love this series. It's very laid back. It's very, um, laid back's not the right word. It's very quiet, melancholy, kind of somber, but it is funny, um, and he's just just trying to go on. It, it's it's great. And so they've released seasons one and two, and now we have seasons three and four. And I recommend it if you like that. And anyway, see Wallander, um, and they they remade Wallander with uh, Kenneth Branagh, and those are good too. Very adult, and adult doesn't necessarily mean like naughty bits all over the place. It just means like it's mature. It's slower it's not like boom like explosions every 30 seconds and i think it's really good um from who is this from this is from kino lorber in association with scorpion releasing where the lilies bloom another movie i have not seen but it comes from a brand new 2k master audio commentary by film historian and filmmaker daniel kramer uh it is a what is this 1974 and uh do i want to do the cast harry dean stanton is here um Directed by William A. Graham. Who's seen this? Let me know. From Kino Lorber, we have El Cortez. I'm high on my priority list. I, I say that a lot, right? But you see the amount of stuff that comes in. And so it's just, you can only watch so many movies in a day. Over People ask me, they'll be like, how many movies do you watch? Over the weekend, I'll knock out six or seven. There are days when I can do six, but I can't do that every day and still bring these videos to you. Uh, every video that you see here has about three hours or more invested in them. The fresh flavors, we're getting up into eight, eight hours, sometimes even 11 or 12 hours. So that's taken away from movie watching time. So I do the best I can. Uh, this one I'm really excited about because it's, it's uh, Lou Diamond Phillips, who I love. Um, it is a, they're calling it an, a, the, the, the plug line here from Variety, an update of classical noir style. El Cortez is the story of an autistic man who attempts to start a new life after his incarceration. After five years in a prison for the criminally insane, Manny, who's Lou Diamond Phillips, returns to Reno. He moves into the motel and takes a job as a clerk at the hotel El Cortez. He is befriended by Popcorn, Bruce White's from Hill Street Blues, a crippled prospector uh, who seeks his help in persuading Russo, Peter Onorati from Goodfellas, a wealthy gambler, to invest in Popcorn's gold mine. But Manny cannot escape his past and is soon caught in a labyrinth that leads to a murderous triple cross. That's film noir. Guy down on his luck trying to start over gets suckered into a scheme and it gets bigger and out of control. That's film noir. So I'm really excited about this. I've never seen this movie. It's from 2006. It's not new. It's from 2006. Uh, we got a behind-the-scenes featurette, deleted scenes, and the trailer. Sounds great, right? I think a lot of you guys are going to be like, I got to check that out. Uh, Richard Wright in Native Son. This is another big deal. This comes from uh, the Kino Classics uh, sub-label as per the Library of Congress. It's prestigious stuff, you guys. One of the most controversial novels of its day, Richard Wright's Native Son, first published in 1940, exposes the injustices of urban African-American life, witnessed through the eyes of Bigger Thomas, whose violent tendencies and moral confusion were the natural result of a lifetime of deprivation. So this has the movie restored and in high definition, uh, the re-release trailer. Uh, uh, by the way, this back, the back of this, I should, I should have said this, the, that description I just read, and the full description is from Eddie Muller from the Film Noir Foundation. Uh, superstar in the movie pundit and curation community. Uh, it comes with a 32-page booklet, and this is dense on the text. I love a booklet. I know you know that. Um, just excellent stuff so i again another one i haven't seen yet but i cannot wait to see it uh and oh here check this out that art it's just i love it i love seeing those original posters and i i also appreciate oh here's more um i also love when they give us different lobby cards and i love when companies pay respect to the and that's one of the things kino lover does a lot pay respect to the original poster art with their covers um, oh, this is a floater. And it's still sealed because it just came. From executive producer Chris Pratt, this is Alaskan Nets, One Town, One Dream. Uh, here, I'm just going to let you read this. This is a basketball in Alaska movie um, with lots of, uh, let's see, did what is the, I'm trying to see if this is a documentary or a film. I think it's a documentary, but it doesn't say. Anyway. Be aware of this one. Uh, 
here's another one a lot of you guys are going to be excited to see uh terror circus is uh now getting wide distribution from kino Lorber in association with code red we have uh oh i thought this had alternate artwork it does not i thought it had alternate artwork here check this out there there's the disc a uh, crazy little um horror movie about a guy that's kidnapping women and basically keeping them out in the desert it's um um Oh, what's his name here? What? Hold on. The guy from Grizzly. What? The guy from Grizzly. Um. Andrew Prine. It's completely Andrew Prine from. Uh. So he's the bad guy here, and he actually read a, a thing where he said it's the one movie he regrets making because it's so dark. He's such a dark character, and I guess he just didn't like the way that it felt. Um. Anyway, so this is now available again on. Uh, I think this had already been reissued at one point. And this is uh, do your do your research on that. I feel like this came out a while back from Code Red, and this is like the wide release. But check up on me. Special features: Barn again, <laughs> returning to Terror Circus. Interviews with the cast and the crew members. Uh, wait, didn't it come out from? It came out, but I don't think it came out from Code Red. I think it came out from somebody else. Was it Shriek Show? Do your research. Follow me up on that. I, I watched that movie. That movie is. Uh, I I like. There's something about that I like. The small, independent horror movies that are, like, it's out in the desert. I, there's something about it that I enjoy. Uh, Natalie, a, this is French, right? Uh, 2003 Studio Canal. It's got Gerard Depardieu in it. Uh, Emmanuel Béart. I'm going to get ripped apart by the Canadians. The French people never say anything. It's the Canadians. They're like, oh, no. Um, anyway, this is a uh, really, I'm excited to see this one, too, because it looks you know, again, like a good here, a rather, let's see, as a rather naughty slice of erotica, it works brilliantly, says the BBC. And they're prudes, right? They're really like, oh no, oh. So for the BBC to give their endorsement to something like this, that's exciting for me. This is from Cohen and it's a classics of French cinema. Uh, any special features we need to shout out here? I don't see any. Um, but I am loving Cohen. I'm loving being able to talk about Cohen, and I love that they're getting that good distribution here, thanks to Kino Lober. Fiddler's Journey to the Big Screen. This is about Fiddler on the Roof. I guess it's the story behind Fiddler, Fiddler on the Roof. In the fall of 2021, uh, the 50th anniversary of Fiddler on the Roof. Um, narrated by Jeff Goldblum. Narrated uh, by uh, uh, Jeff Goldblum. Uh, Fiddler's Journey to the Big Screen captures the humor and drama of Norm, Norman Jewison's quest to recreate the world's long, the lost world of Jewish life uh, in Russia and re-envision... Anyway, somewhere there's... Um, here we go. Here's a statement by the director. I was like, somewhere on here there's a picture of John Williams I wanted to show you guys. There's uh, the director with John Williams. So this is another one that just looks great. And uh, I am really excited to check it out. It goes in the stack. Tons of bonus features. The Man on Lincoln's Nose, Daniel Ramey, uh, Daniel Ramey's Oscar-nominated short. Uh, additional interviews with John Williams, T uh, Topol. There's so many people here. I'm just going to hold this up and you can read that. Freeze it, read it. This video is already a little longer than I was hoping it would be. Uh, we got some documentaries. Stay Prayed Up. This is about the 83-year-old Lena May Perry and her legendary North Carolina gospel group, The Branchettes. DVD, of course. Uh, Invisible, Val In In Invisible Valley. So we'll flip over, show you guys that. Freeze frame that so you can read it. Uh, Museum Town, narrated by Meryl Streep. Who said that Art News said it's one of the 10 best art documentaries of 2020. The New York Times said it's a love letter to the Massachusetts Museum of Contemporary Art. I've never been there. Who's been there? We got a lot of people in Massachusetts. The MA. What do you think about it? Um, from uh, This is the latest release from Mark Rappaport, the guy behind Rock Hudson's Home Movies. Is it the journal or the diary of Gene Seberg? I can't remember. The diary of Gene Seberg? Um, maybe they say Rock Hudson's Home The journals of Gene Seberg. I was wrong. I chose poorly. Uh, the Silver Screen, Color Me Lavender. So Mark Rappaport is taking a trip through Hollywood. These movies are, this, they're from the 90s, right? Yeah, Rock Hudson's Home Movies is, I think, 92. This is 97. Uh, Mark Rappaport goes through classic Hollywood movies and points out what he perceives to be evidence of homosexuality 
hidden in mainstream Hollywood movies. I've shared my thoughts on this before. Uh, a lot of it is out of context and he's pushing a very specific thing, but I understand that these movies have a huge fan base and Keanu Lover seems to be releasing every single one of Mark Rappaport's Hollywood retro retrospectives. Uh, so this now joins the pantheon of the other Mark Rappaport's uh, films about classic Hollywood. And then last but not least, Accepted. This was an entry in the Tribeca Film Fest. Uh, let's see, T.M. Landry, an unconventional prep school in Louisiana, receives national attention for sending its graduates to elite universities. When an explosive New York Times expose rocks, the school students face un an uncertain future and must decide for themselves what they are willing to do to be accepted. All right, guys, that is Kino Lorber, July 2022. It's a ton of stuff, right? I, I'm tempted to pick this up and show you, but I will drop them and then that will be sad. Uh, I I love these. This makes me so this You see why I get so excited. It's everything, right? It's it's film noir. It's uh, Eternal Sunshine. Like great movies in 4K. It's indie stuff. It's horror stuff. It's it's just epic. I love talking about this stuff. And Kino Lover just continues to get better and better and bigger every single month. Thanks again to Kino Lover for making this video possible. Guys, support these videos by watching it, by thumbs upping the video if you can, and by uh, letting, if you can let Kino Lover know that you appreciate this coverage and that it helps you make your own informed purchase decisions, let him know. Uh, I want to keep doing these for as long as I can because I, I just, you, you see the passion, right? So guys, thank you. Take care. Until next time, I'll catch you later.